Welcome back to Road to Fire, where a family of three documented our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. Welcome back to Road to Fire, where a family of three documented our journey to fire, financial independence, retire early. A little late, but let's talk about our September 2021 net worth update. I'll provide all of our current assets and liabilities and outline our growth over the last six months with all the numbers like always, so please hang with me. So this is our first net worth decline in over 15 months, and it's well expected. If you watched our September portfolio update video, then you know that our investments were down versus last month. This was a trend for almost all of my favorite small finance YouTubers as well. And I try not to focus on things I can't control and well, we just can't control the market. We will keep doing what we do for the long term. But because we are hoarding more cash right now than ever, we didn't see a huge or big hit to our overall net worth. We did see a decline. It was slight, but still a decline. This is why diversification is key when it comes to building your portfolio. Yes, I know we are still heavily weighted in stocks, but we do have other assets that are offsetting or hedging our losses. But I'm always torn about this. Should we continue to hold more cash on hand for the long run or stay lean, which is our current strategy? Let me know your thoughts below in the comments. Okay, like always, finding your net worth is very simple, or at least the calculation is. So to find your net worth, you take your assets minus your liabilities. Think of your assets of what you own while your liabilities are what you owe. Our focus is to continue to grow our high appreciating assets over time to help us reach fire faster and avoid adding more liabilities, especially depreciating assets to our portfolio. But when it comes to calculating your net worth, I always get asked this simple question or I find varying perspectives on this topic. So which assets should you include or which assets should be included and excluded in your net worth calculation? Now I see this debate all the time whenever I see net worth update videos. Don't include your primary home, cameras are not assets, don't include your car, your wedding ring is not worth anything, and so forth. One thing is for sure that in the financial community there are many or different schools and thoughts on what you should and should not include in your net worth calculations. Now the easiest way to answer this question is to find what you define as an asset. Your net worth is determined by what you include and exclude. Only thing that I really want to call out is to keep your calculations consistent just for the integrity of your data. So we choose to add assets that make sense for our plan right now, but your process might not be the same and you know what? That's definitely okay. Okay, so let's review our numbers for September. All numbers are through the end of September, which also marks the end of Q3. We have one more quarter left to hit our overall financial goals. Keep in mind, Almost like a PSA, these numbers are a snapshot in time and because most of our net worth is in our investments, it is bound to change for better or for the worse based on the market movements. Although I do love these updates, our net worth is not the same as our FIRE tracker. Now I made an entire video on that to give you an outline on the core assets that matter the most to us. We invested about 2,000 after tax dollars this month but saved over $6,000 in cash so I love to see our sticking funds tick up month over month. I'm happy to see that our savings are finally getting to a more comfortable level. So our assets are made up of two main sections. We have large and fixed assets as well as our liquid assets or our fire assets. Like always, our net worth is almost all in our stock portfolio outline here and that probably won't change anytime soon. So our large and our fixed assets include three assets overall. First are our two cars which are both depreciating assets but still have value as of today. The value of our cars have increased with the crazy used car market, but we never increase the value in our net worth calculations as that is not a part of our long-term plan and it's a car. We won't be retiring on our cars. And our other asset is our duplex, which we bought in the end of November of last year. I keep this value fixed as well despite it increasing in value over the last several months, I feel the market is finally leveling out so we will make the adjustments at the top of the year. And these three assets values have stayed relatively flat versus last month, landing at $425,321. So for our liquid assets, we include our investments, both taxable and non-taxable, as well as our cash on hand. For cash, we have $1,475 in our checking accounts, and that's like a monthly buffer for us. We then have just over $30,000 in our savings, which is up over $4,100 versus last month. In total, we have just about $32,000 of cash in our accounts, mostly within our savings accounts within Capital One. We are still hoarding cash as of right now. So our decline comes in our retirement accounts. We have about $258,000 in our 401ks, IRAs, and our Roths, and that is a slight decline from last month. 
And then we have $91,376 in our after-tax brokerage accounts. Because we invested mostly in VTSAX, we definitely saw a hit last month in these accounts. In total, our liquid assets are at $381,487, still hoping to break $400,000 this year. For total liabilities, we only have two items, but that will change in November. We have one car loan and the balance is at $21,432, which is barely moving as our debt-free journey has kind of been frozen lately. We then have a current mortgage on our house hack with a balance of just over $337,000. In total, we owe just under $359,000. Okay, here's how things rolled up in September. Our total assets are just about $807,000, including our liquid and our long-term fixed assets. And our total liabilities, including our last car loan and our duplex, is just under $359,000, making our total net worth to be $447,823, which is down about $1,000 from last month. We are still chasing the $495,000 marker this year, and I still believe it's possible. Next milestone is $475,000 net worth. Okay, so here's our net worth trend graph for 2021. This gives me a snapshot of the last six months to keep me grounded, especially in down months. In April, our net worth was just over $390,000, but in August, we hit $448,000, and this month, we dropped slightly down to $447,000. Now, this may seem like a small drop, but keep in mind of all the money we put in the market monthly, including our taxable and non-taxable contributions. But I'm really glad I'm keeping track of our net worth consistently now as it really does help me focus on the long term versus the monthly fluctuations. So I believe October is the last cash hoarding month for us. We found a house and stay tuned as our next video is all about our crazy house hunting journey. I do see the value of houses dropping based on Zillow and Redfin in our area and I'm happy that we were not one of those buyers who bid over asking. I honestly feel like house hunting right now was a kind of a gamble. So if you don't have to buy a house right now, don't. Now, I know September was a bit of a down month, but still confident that we will edge our way closer towards our end of our year goal. Now, I've been thinking about 2022 goals and probably won't add a net worth target into the mix because I just can't control it. September did make me think about how we can continue to diversify our portfolio for long-term growth. Now, I'm not a fan of alternative investments, but maybe we should make a stronger effort to research some of those areas and opportunities. But fingers crossed, October will end on a higher note. Now, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. Until next time.